As the Arizona Trail makes its way across the state, it passes by some amazing Wild West history. The stories that these areas have really put you in touch with the amazing landscape that is Arizona and how humanity has connected to it for well over 10,000 years. So today, we're gonna to be learning about some of the amazing historical things you're gonna see when you're doing any through hike or section hike on the Arizona Trail. Let's get started. reference, we're going to be going in order with these historical places from south to north on the trail. So as if you were a northbound hiker, because I know many of you that are going to be seeing this video are going to be spring northbound hikers that are just getting ready to go on your adventure. So let's start things off right where the trail starts, the southern terminus Montezuma Pass. This is where the southern terminus of the Arizona Trail is located. This area is actually thought to be the first place that Europeans came into what is now Arizona in the Coronado Expedition that took place in the mid-1500s. Initially setting out to search for the lost cities of gold, Coronado's expedition marked the first time that Europeans saw the Grand Canyon and he took his expedition as far north as what is now Kansas. Some believe that border marker 102 where the Arizona Trail normally starts, is very close to where Coronado led his men way back in the 1500s. Sadly, due to border wall construction, the trails that access the border monument are currently closed and much of the natural area has been altered to allow for heavy machinery to construct the wall. Perhaps now that the Bind administration is in power, this will allow for the reopening of this area sooner than we thought. The second spot we're gonna be talking about is called Kentucky Camp. It's located in Passage 5 of the Arizona Trail in the foothills of the Santa Rita Mountains. Kentucky Camp served as headquarters for the Santa Rita Water and Mining Company from 1902 to 1906. Mining the area's rich deposits required massive amounts of water to separate the gold from sand and gravel. But the surrounding arroyos were dry Finding a reliable source of water for the mining operations was crucial to their success. Originally, the company hired mule teams to carry water up into the mountains for this purpose. After this proved to be way too expensive, the company intended to channel seasonal runoff into a reservoir large enough to support operations. Several water pipelines from this era can be seen on trail between Kentucky Camp and Gardner Canyon Road trailhead to the south. After the owner of Santa Rita Water and Mining Company fell from a Tucson hotel window in 1905 and died, the operation didn't keep going for much longer, and most of the company's assets were auctioned off in 1906. After mining operations ceased, the area was used for cattle ranching until the 1960s and was then sold to another mining company. The Forest Service acquired Kentucky Camp in 1989 and has since been restoring the camp's buildings as, as an interpretive mining camp to educate about the mining practices that were used historically. Although the bunkhouse at Kentucky Camp has minimal amenities, there are more than enough for hikers passing through on the Arizona Trail and can be reserved ahead at recreation.gov. Now we're going to be talking about the Manning Camp. The Manning Camp is located in the Rincon Mountains of Passage 9 of the Arizona Trail within Saguaro National Park. According to the National Park Service's historical account, in 1904, Levi Manning filed for a 160-acre homestead in the Rincon Mountains. He had an 11-mile wagon road built to access the site of the proposed cabin. 1905, Manning hired men to build the cabin using pack horses and wagons to transport materials to the site. Trees for the cabin came from the immediate vicinity. 
The log structure contained a living room with a fireplace, a kitchen, two bedrooms, and two small bunk rooms. The cabin also housed a piano brought up from the Rincon Valley via the wagon road. The Manning family used it as a summer home until the Forest Service annexed the cabin and the surrounding land to create Coronado National Forest in 1907. So they used it for two years? Sounds like a great investment. <laughs> this area was actually leased from the National Forest for a little over a decade after this, but it wasn't used by the Manning family ever again. In the mid-1900s, the cabin was used as a fire watch cabin as well as trail crew housing. It underwent several substantial renovations in this time due to the deterioration of the original structure. The cabin was added to the National Register of Historic Places in the 1970s, and now the cabin is used to house some of the backcountry operations of the National Park Service in the area. This includes backcountry rangers, biologists, people like that. But you can camp there. Reservations can be made ahead of time to camp here, and it may be a good idea as the hike up and over Micah Mountain is quite the challenge for a single day. Continuing on, the Gordon Hirabayashi Campground is located in Passage 11 in Coronado National Forest. This campground actually used to be the site of the Catalina Federal Prison Camp, or Catalina Federal Honor Camp during World War II. It housed federal prisoners starting in 1937. Inmates housed at the camp built over 20 miles of road through Coronado National Forest, which would become the Catalina Highway, which leads up Mount Lemmon to the town of Summerhaven, connecting it to Tucson. During World War II, some of those incarcerated here were Japanese Americans protesting the Japanese American relocation. This relocation was the largest forced removal and incarceration in U.S. history. After the Japanese Navy attacked Pearl Harbor in 1941, over 100,000 Japanese Americans, many of them who were American citizens, were forced into crowded internment camps due to government fears that they would conduct espionage and sabotage along the West Coast. During this time, Gordon Hirabayashi was a student at the University of Washington. After resisting the enforced curfew and internment of Japanese Americans on constitutional grounds, Hirabayashi was convicted of violating a curfew and sentenced to the Catalina Federal Honor Camp in 1942. The Catalina Federal Prison Camp closed in 1951 upon the completion of the Catalina Highway. The camp itself was torn down in the 1970s. Later in 1987, far too late, Hirabayashi's case was overturned by a Supreme Court panel. A federal commission determined that the internment had been motivated by racial prejudice and wartime hysteria. In 1999, the Coronado National Forest renamed the former prison site in honor of Dr. Hirabayashi and the other resistors of conscience who were in prison there. Our next location is deep in the superstition wilderness. Rivas Ranch is located in Passage 19 of the Arizona Trail in the superstition wilderness of Tonto National Forest. Rivas Ranch is named after Alicia Rivas, a quirky man of legend who used to call the area home in the late 1800s. He was known by some as the Hermit of the Superstition Mountains, and according to some accounts, local tribes of Native Americans thought that he had supernatural abilities or was an evil spirit and steered clear of his ranch. According to local newspapers from the time, Alicia grew a variety of fruits and vegetables, including cabbages, parsnips, potatoes, cherries, and other fruits and vegetables to sell to mining communities nearby. Apple trees can still be found here to this day if you go during the right time of year. It's really an amazing spot in the mountains there. I'd highly recommend staying there. Once you finally make it onto the Mogollon Rim, what's waiting for you there is General Springs Cabin. It's located in Passage 27 of the Arizona Trail within Coconino National Forest. The cabin was originally built in 1918 by Louis Fisher. Fisher and other early rangers used this and other cabins in the area as fire guard stations. Nearby General Springs was named after General George Crook 
who used this spring during his travels along the Fort Apache Camp Verde military road in the mid to late 1800s. During this period, General Crook was involved in the Battle of Big Dry Wash, which occurred just a few miles north of this cabin. After a band of Apache Indians attacked local ranches and settlers, troops and scouts from the territorial fort were dispatched to the area. On July 17, 1882, five groups of cavalry and one group of scouts converged on the Apaches. After four hours of fighting, the Apaches were defeated with more than 20 casualties. The U.S. troops suffered only two casualties in this battle. General Springs Cabin was used by the Forest Service until the 1960s. After sitting abandoned for over 20 years, in the 1980s, the Forest Service refurbished the cabin to its present state, and it remains as a historical place. Although use is prohibited, one can enter the cabin and see what living in Arizona around the turn of the century truly looked like. After walking through the pine forests of the Mogollon Rim a little bit longer, you'll eventually make it to the Mormon Railroad Grade. This is within Passage 30 of the Arizona Trail in Coconino National Forest. As you hike around the west side of Mormon Lake on the Arizona Trail, you will pass and even follow the grades of several old, of several old logging roads. The Flagstaff Lumber Company extended their logging railroad to Mormon Lake and Mormon Mountain in the 1920s. The railroad was constructed primarily to haul logs cut from the surrounding forests to sawmills in Flagstaff, Williams, and other areas. However, on weekends, the railroad would carry as many as 300 passengers to the Mormon Lake area. A plaque on the trail reads, quote, the Flagstaff Lumber Company's railroad ceased operation in 1927 due to a slump in timber prices and the high cost of operating a railroad up the seven mile grade to Mormon Mountain. Other logging railroads continued to operate in Northern Arizona until 1966. Today, these railroad grades provide a unique opportunity for the hiker to travel these traditional routes under their own power rather than under steam power." End quote. Last but certainly not least, the Grand Canyon is one of the most iconic stretches of the entire Arizona Trail, and honestly it's one of the most iconically Arizona places in the whole state. It boasts an impressive history that begins over a billion years ago with the formation of some of the deepest igneous rocks found at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, the Vishnu Basement Rocks. Geologists believe that the canyon began to be carved out somewhere between five and six million years ago when the Colorado River started flowing. The erosion from the water began exposing the myriad of rock layers that can be now seen. As I said earlier, Coronado's expedition is believed to be the first group of Europeans to see the canyon, but it had a sacred significance to many of the humans who called the area home for thousands of years prior. Archaeologists have discovered ruins and artifacts from inhabitants dating back nearly 12,000 years. Prehistoric humans first settled in and around the canyon during the last ice age, when mammoths, giant sloths, and other large mammals still roam North America. Ancestral Pueblo people, followed by the Paiute, Navajo, Zuni, and Hopi tribes, once inhabited the Grand Canyon. The Havasupai people now claim the Grand Canyon is their ancestral home. According to tribal history, the Havasupai have lived in and around the canyon for more than 800 years. More than 300 years passed before U.S. soldier botanist and explorer Joseph Ives entered the Grand Canyon on a mapping expedition of the Colorado River in 1858. American geologist John Newberry served as a naturalist on the expedition, becoming the first known geologist to study the Grand Canyon. A decade after this, John Wesley Powell, a one-armed Civil War veteran, led another expedition down the Colorado River. His expedition produced more detailed maps of the Colorado River's route through the canyon. He navigated the river atop a rowboat with a chair tied down onto the deck, and he himself tied to the chair. 
Teddy Roosevelt declared the Grand Canyon as a national monument under the Antiquities Act in the first few years of the 1900s, and the Grand Canyon achieved national park status in 1919, three years after President Woodrow Wilson created the National Park Service. In the 1920s, the bridge that spans the Colorado River on the Kaibab Trail, as well as Phantom Ranch, were both constructed. All 122 tons of building materials required for the bridge had to be carried down on trail either by mule or on foot. The one ton 550 foot cables used in the construction of the bridge were carried by 42 Havasupai tribesmen walking single file all the way down into the canyon, over seven miles. Although getting a reservation for a cabin at Phantom Ranch is probably one of the hardest reservations to come by. Nearby Bright Angel Campground also makes for a great stop to enjoy the canyon during your through hike. I'd highly recommend spending a night or two down there. It's unforgettable. The Arizona Trail really does an exceptional job at bringing trail users close to the history that defines what Arizona is. The human connection that can be formed through history and understanding the significance that a lot of these places had in someone's life that came before you really is kind of amazing. And the imprint that these people had on the planet still exists here today. Coming into contact in some way, shape, or form with those people's energies or the things that matter to them really add a lifelike quality to the trail and the experience of through hiking on it. I hope that this video gave you some sort of a deeper appreciation for the Arizona Trail and the amazing people that had to exist in the Wild West and today to give the Arizona Trail this amazing quality. I guess all that there's left to say then is thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button down below as it will tell the YouTube algorithm that you appreciate my work and it will get some more people watching these videos, which would help me out a bunch. If you think I earned it, maybe consider subscribing down there so you can be here for my future videos, whether they're history-based ones like this one, or maybe an adventure. Hint, I may or may not have a nice backpacking adventure coming up really soon. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Let's continue going on this adventure together. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay groovy.